welcome to another episode of Infoscope. I'm your host, Hannah Kim. It's once again time for the latest from the IT and science world. Let's start by taking a look at some of today's headlines. Superconductors are capable of conducting electricity with no electrical resistance. However, they are only possessing such properties at extremely low temperatures around negative 240 degrees Celsius, making it difficult to commercialize. Korean scientists have now come up with new research to change that. And turning our attention to the Zika virus, new studies suggest that even adults who have contracted or are exposed to the Zika virus are at risk of developing health problems, especially in the brain. Let's take a closer look at some of these stories in our first segment, Briefing Scope. American researchers have published a study suggesting that the Zika virus may harm adult brains as well. The researchers observed in adult mice that the virus targets what are called neural progenitor cells, which help replace damaged neurons and assist with learning and memory. Researchers from the Institute for Basic Science have made the dream of commercializing superconductors one step closer to reality. Superconductors, which conduct electricity with no resistance, require extremely low temperatures, but the researchers put forward iron superconductors and managed to raise the temperature by almost 20 degrees Celsius. On September 8th, NASA launched the Osiris-Rex spacecraft, beginning a two-year journey to the asteroid Bennu. It's expected to touch down on Bennu in August 2018 when the asteroid makes its closest approach to Earth and get a sample of the asteroid's composition and return to Earth in September 2023. Researchers from the Korean National Arboretum announced that they have found beer lichen inhabiting the Halasan Natural Protection Area. Only three species of beard lichen are found in Korea and they grow on cliffs or trees at least 1,000 meters above sea level. Moving on to the next part of our show, have you ever noticed the growing efforts to create green spaces around Korean cities? Although these public parks and gardens provide great benefits to our environment, they are attracting more wasps. Now, the number of people suffering or even dying from these wasp stings is increasing every year. We'll have more details on this in just a bit. But first, let's talk about animals. Do you know which animal has the longest lifespan? I always thought that it would be turtles or whales, but no, it's actually the Greenland sharks and the immortal jellyfish. Which of these animals can live up to 400 years? We'll find out next on Industry Inside. This is the Shipjangsang, or the 10 traditional symbols of longevity. Turtles have been regarded as sacred creatures because of their long lifespan. The giant tortoise lives up to 190 years, however, the bowhead whale can outlive the giant tortoise by 10 to 20 years. A recent research has introduced another animal to the top of the list. Danish scientists have found through extracting protein from the cornea of 28 Greenland sharks that their average lifespan is 400 years. The secret lies in their low body temperature that helps them survive in the cold environment. The 운동력이 아주 적습니다. 움직이는 활동이 그래서 에너지 소모가 아주 극히 적고 또 먹이를 먹이 섭취 활동할 때만 움직이기 때문에 아주 오래 사는 상어로 이렇게 알려져 있습니다. The Greenland shark is the oldest vertebrate, but when invertebrates are included, the quahog clam takes the title with a record of 507 years. The immortal jellyfish is capable of reverting back to a sexually immature stage becoming theoretically capable of immortality. Unfortunately, it is very low in the food chain, making it difficult to live a long, natural life in the wild. In September of last year, a firefighter died from wasp stings while taking down a wasp's nest in Sanchong, Gyeongsangnam-do province. The culprit was the Asian predatory wasp, which was introduced from China in 2003. Unlike native wasps that live in forests, these foreign species live in urban settings. Asian predatory wasps make up 90% of all wasps in Pusan and urban areas in the Yongnam region, 
and they have been spotted in Seoul recently as well. After losing their forest habitats to native Asian giant hornets, the Asian predatory wasps have found refuge in the green spaces in cities. Moreover, they are highly predatory and resilient, and the recent heat wave in the summer has boosted their numbers. These wasps also hold more venom than honeybees. Unlike honeybees, which lose their stinger once they attack, Asian predatory wasps can sting numerous times with one stinger and lead to death in worst-case scenarios. Autumn is the season for outdoor activities, but take caution as this is also when Asian predatory wasps become most active. She recalls a lost memory after hearing drops of water. She recalls with clarity how she was kidnapped and is seized by terror. After a traumatic experience, the brain generates a memory of the trauma. When there's a trigger, the memory comes back. Korean researchers have found that the way memories are formed and erased differs by sound. Researchers implanted a fear-inducing memory in lab mice by using everyday noise, white noise, and frequency-modulated noise. When the different sounds were played back repeatedly, only the mice exposed to frequency-modulated noise overcame the fear. In order to erase memories, a specific protein is needed. Only the frequency-modulated sound generated enough of this protein. Applying this research to patients of post-traumatic stress disorder can result in a better case-by-case -case program for erasing traumatic memories. This research and its results were published in the Global Scientific Journal, Scientific Report. Even though additional research is needed, it seems like great news when you can use sounds to alleviate traumatic pain, let alone erase it altogether. Now let's shift our gear over to some of the newest technologies around the world. Recently, a team of doctors used virtual reality and robots to help a paralyzed patient regain control of her legs. We'll have more on how this was made possible in just a moment. And for our next story, while medical micro-robots have the potential to precisely deliver medications, they have been held back by various technical issues. However, Korean researchers have now created a new robot modeled after a type of microorganism that can move up to 25 times faster than conventional micro-robots. Here are some more details on this in our next segment, Tech a Peek. This micro-robot has a diameter of less than one millimeter. It travels through blood vessels and delivers medication to precise locations. However, most micro-robots move with the help of magnetism, reducing their speed. Korean researchers have created a ciliary micro-robot, which imitates the movements of a paramecium. There are eight cilia, half as thick as a strand of hair, attached to the oval-shaped body. When a magnetic field is generated, the cilia move like rows. Even in highly viscous fluid like blood, this robot can move 25 times more quickly than conventional micro-robots. Micro-robots are heavily affected by friction, but ciliary movement give them full control. The ciliary micro-robot can be used for research on arteries, the brain, and even highly viscous fluids. Moreover, the robot can deliver medications to desired locations, preventing drug overdose or damage on other organs. 
The research and its results were published in the Global Scientific Journal, Scientific Report. In 2013, about 150 scientists from all over the world came together to work on a highly ambitious project of helping paralyzed people walk by using equipment controlled by brainwaves. The movements imagined by the brain were expressed in virtual reality, and a wearable exoskeleton would move the patient as imagined. After three years of research, the scientists were in for a surprise. Repeated training resulted in patients being able to move their muscles again. Something that was a very big surprise for us, the discovery that the long-term training with brain machine interfaces in patients that suffered a spinal cord injury a long time ago can lead to partial neurological recovery. The researchers held weekly training sessions for two hours with eight patients. After 12 months, all patients were able to recover some degree of touch and the functions of their internal organs were restored. One patient was able to walk on their own without the help of doctors or equipment after 10 months of training. The researchers believe that the repetitive training exercises stimulated and regenerated nerves. Uh, directly, but also providing very rich tactile feedback to the patients and making them walk bipedally with our exoskeleton or with this machine, the locomat here, we may actually have triggered a plastic reorganization in the cortex. The researchers now aim to simplify the latest technology used in their research and make it available to other hospitals. Breast cancer is the second most prevalent form of cancer afflicting women in Korea. The chances of recurrence or metastasis are high, so following surgery, patients undergo a variety of treatments. The biggest cause of breast cancer is the oversupply of estrogen. Patients with estrogen acceptors must consume hormone drugs following surgery. 전체 환자분들의 70% 이상이 여성 호르몬 수용체가 발현이 돼 있거든요. 그 유방 자체의 재발률도 줄일 수가 있고 반대편 유방에 생기는 것도 줄일 수가 있기 때문에요. 이렇게 여성 호르몬 수용체가 발현이 돼 있으신 분들은 호르몬 치료는 꼭 받으셔야 됩니다. However, despite the treatment, one out of every five patients will have a recurrence. The survival rate then falls drastically. Korean researchers have developed a new treatment to overcome these shortcomings. A substance that inhibits the breakdown of glucose in cancer cells was added to hormone therapy drugs, which resulted in the breakdown of a specific gene that plays a major role in cancer growth and relapse. Subsequently, cancer cells disappeared twice as quickly. 일반적으로 암세포는 포도당 대사가 정상 세포하고 다른데 정상 세포와 다른 그 암세포 포도당 대사를 저해하는 약물을 어, 호르몬 치료 약물과 같이 첨가하였을 때 어, 호르몬 치료 효과를 두배 정도 상승시켰. Also, the number of cells resistant to previous treatments fell by half. Researchers believe that this treatment can help predict the chances of breast cancer recurrence as well. Because breast cancer is the second most common form of cancer here in Korea, I really do hope that all hospitals implement this new treatment method very soon. Keep in mind that Breast Cancer Awareness Month for 2016 begins on October 1st, which is actually this coming weekend, and the annual campaign aims to not only raise awareness for the disease, but also tries to encourage people to detect the disease at an early stage. Now the last story wraps up today's episode of Infoscope. We will be sure to bring you more interesting and informative news next time. Have a wonderful day and goodbye everyone!